Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the High B Buzz. I'm Angus Scott and it's great to have you on board. What a week since we last recorded, unfortunately, knocked out of Europe, but a win in the cup and things on the up domestically, certainly top of the league and looking good. Look at my guests looking good today. As ever, we have Adam Tomlinson from Hibs TV and Ben Jacobs, our head of comms. But delighted to say along with us is uh, Christian Deutsch as well. The only thing is that means there must be something wrong. He must be injured. And we all know he is and he's out until Christmas, which is a huge disappointment. We're talking to Christian in just a moment. But a reminder of what else is coming up on the show today. We'll be speaking to the boss, of course, as we do every week and hearing from the man who's just signed that contract extension, the new contract, Martin Boyle, the boiler will be with us, and also how that social media uh, tweet came about and the little signs from the club, the little clues as to what was going on. Very nicely done, social media team. All that to come and a little insight into what is happening next week. We have the most extraordinary duo, two people you would never put together, on next week's show, I'll just give you a little clue. It is a great double act. It is Judy and Rudy. And more of that a little bit later. But back on to today. And Christian, you are with us, obviously, because the huge disappointment that you're going to be out for 12 or so weeks. Um, gutting feeling for you. Yeah, I was obviously um, very sad at the time. But, you know, uh, these things happen in football and you kind of um, just got to get, get on with it. Um, obviously, started my rehab now. I've got to wear a boot for six weeks, which is going to be uh, kind of annoying. But um, I know it's going to help with recovery. So got to stay strong and keep it on. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a good place. You know, it's just one of those things. You just got to crack on. It's my first probably long term injury um, as a professional. So probably been lucky to, to not get one um, but you know just going to take it in my stride and, and concentrate on making myself better. There are different things you've got to deal with when and, and as you say this is a bit of a new experience for you being out for sort of three months or so not only you've got you've got to listen to what our physios are saying you've got to sort of keep yourself mentally in the right place as well. Yeah I think um, that's probably one of the most important things is to to keep motivated every day to, to because you it can be you're doing a lot of the same things and um this can become very boring but um the medical team here are, are fantastic you know nathan um i think his cv uh, speaks for itself so I'm, i know i'm in really good hands um but it's just down to me to crack on with it and um and try and improve and what have you been doing what's the first step that uh, that you can do obviously i mean with a boot you can you can put some weight on it but obviously not out of the boot yeah, well, I've had I've had a few days off just to, just to rest because I've come in today, and in all honesty, there's not a lot you can do yet. Um, obviously, can't do much um, leg exercises or any anything like that. But I did have the boot off, and they went through it, and they were they were very happy with how the Achilles was. Um, I was doing a few exercises with my toes, very unusual, just to strengthen it up. And then uh, spoke to Colin, and we done a bit of upper body uh, in the gym, and um, that's it. I'm done for the day. Um, <laughs> that's easy life. <laughs> Easy life, yeah, but uh, I can't drive at the moment, so I've been waiting for Mel for Halberg. He's, he's still in his, he's doing his rehab and he's working really hard, so I've got to wait for him to finish to, to drop me on. So, so as, you, as your sort of recuperation is, is on a little small scale at the moment, what will you be watching? The end of Love Island? I know Adam's really into it at the moment, so what, what, <laughs> what, what, what are you be watching? Oh, well, I think 90% of the squad are watching Love Island at the moment. So that, that's <laughs> there you go. The topic of conversation every morning. Um, everyone's debating and, and speaking about it. You know, uh, definitely watch that. But, you know, you get quite a lot of spare time playing playing football and you're yeah. on your couch a lot and seem to have gone through everything on, on Netflix. Um, but I'm sure there'll be a little diamond in the rough that I'll find. Um, there's, uh, there always is. So, yeah, just go home and, and relax and, you know, rest the foot up. And, and try and get back as quick as possible. As quickly as possible. I mean, have you got any favourites on on Love Island? I, I mean, he asked the question. You could talk about anyone, and I'd have no idea what you're talking about. But Adam, Adam, be in with it with you. Well, Adam, Adam guess who my favourite would be. Ooh, that's a that's a difficult one. Like Toby, Toby and Chloe. I'm, I like those two as a couple. Right. Okay. Liam and Millie. 
Labour Millie, yeah. See, they were, he's they Welsh, were close second. He's from Merthyr Tidville, so... Yeah, of course. Yeah. He's, he's from Merthyr. I haven't given you any grief, actually, you know, that you, that you used to be at Bristol Rovers. And, you know, d- deep down, I'm a, a Bristol City, obviously, as well as a Hibs fan. So um, I've, I've been very generous not to... Um, <laughs> be a bit of stick on, well, I, well, on I was young. I was young. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, yeah to, you've I learned since. But... <laughs> You know, I'm probably I, I'm probably a gas head of uh, Bristol City, to be honest. Look, just just say just say from a club perspective, because you were out in Croatia, we need to reflect on that the disappointment of going out uh, against Rijeka, but then you know the strong performance at the weekend. Yeah, um, obviously I was out there uh, watching the game, and you know we had really good spells in that game where we probably could have um, capitalised, but you know it wasn't meant to be. Um, I think the score lines probably. Not a fair um, result of the game, you know. Boys done well, and it just sometimes things like that happen. And everyone was obviously devastated, but to bounce back um, a lot of games in a short amount of time and put a really professional performance in against Kilmarnock, and obviously getting through to the next round is it's great for the football club. We've obviously um, in cup competitions we've done really well, really well. We've obviously not got to that. We haven't lifted the trophy, but we've we've got ourselves very close on numerous occasions, and uh, we've just got to, as a football club keep maintaining those standards and, and keep pushing. Good stuff, uh, Christian. Uh, plenty more to come, but before we move on uh, any further, let's hear from the boss, Jack, and feel what uh, and get get a grip of uh, what his feelings are at the moment. Well, it's been a, it's felt like a strange week actually because it's been so long between games. And we've not had that this season. Um, we had a couple of days to begin with that allowed the players and staff to have some breathing space that we hadn't had since the start of pre-season. Um, we had a bounce match this week as well, which enabled um, players that haven't had enough minutes recently to get 90 minutes. Um, and I think they benefited from that. And then from that point, it becomes normal and structured and consistent with what we do. So all our work today has been about getting ready for um, Sunday and the challenge that we face. What do you expect from Dundee? Well, they're a team that often promoted teams have come with um, early season momentum um, and that's the case of Dundee because their latter part of the season was very good they were strong through the playoffs I like the fact they've got a number of players with Premiership experience and it's no surprise that they've started the season positively um, had a good result last weekend in the Cup and away from home in the Premiership is never easy so really respectful of the challenge that we'll face from James and his players but we've said it consistently for a period now we um, approach games in a really good frame of mind for, for the level the players are producing individually and as a team at the moment. And equally, your players are in a very, very good position mentally with winning momentum behind them. Yeah, we, we enjoyed a good season last year. That helped us go into the pre-season period feeling good. Um, but pre-season is still important. I think that the level of performance and results pre-season continued that momentum and then we've carried that into the early season games. We've, the one disappointment has been the second leg in Croatia. A load for large parts of performance I was really pleased with. So we feel as if we're, um, we've continued that momentum from last season into this season. We want to be better again this year. I've said that consistently. But right now the group are going the right way about that. Um, a lot of individual players at the top of the game at the moment. Ben, you were out in, in Croatia. And what was Jack's um, real feeling um, and, and that feeling in between games, you know, travelling back, there's a huge disappointment you're out of Europe when we were really hoping um, that this this might be a year we can get into the group stages. And and then such a stunning performance on, on you know, a, a clinical performance on Sunday. I think, first of all, the lads did brilliantly because it's obviously quite a sombre trip back and we didn't land from Rijeka having been knocked out of Europe until about four in the morning local time, and that's on a Friday And then you've got to go straight into the match day routine. And most footballers will tell you that if you lose a big game, you want another game straight afterwards. And thankfully, we were able to respond and put a positive spin on the week. And if anything, as you start to reflect on Europe, it's perhaps this coming week where you get to that Tuesday and you're not travelling to Greece. And that's where it kind of starts to sink in and you really reflect. And then I'm sure that Christian and the team will be the first to say that they'll be galvanised by that because we didn't enter Europe just to be tokenistic. We entered Europe to make the group stage of the Europa Conference League, which means that the next step and the only thing that you can affect is the forthcoming season. So now everyone's got a taste of it and some of the lads are playing in Europe for the first time. So they'll be desperate to get back into Europe 
And the beauty in Scottish football is you've got lots of routes into Europe. And one of those routes is through winning a cup, which means that being able to play Kilmarnock at home in front of an unrestricted crowd at Easter Road was a huge positive because we now feel like we're on the road again to hopefully some kind of glory and silverware in Europe. And what I kind of like particularly about the Scottish League Cup is not only that it concludes midway through the season, so you can actually have a cup final potentially to look forward to, or a semi-final trip to Hamden as well very early in the season, but even just by winning one game, you're into a quarter final. So again, you start thinking about the business end of an important goal, which is to win silverware at this football club. But I think as far as Rieka is concerned, the feeling amongst Jack and no doubt the players was just the missed opportunity. Because if you enter Europe and you're roundly beaten, or if you've got a difficult draw and you get knocked out, that's one thing. You reflect on it and you learn from it. But fundamentally, this was a very good Rijeka side that have qualified for the Europa League group stages on multiple occasions. They've run the likes of Napoli close. They only lost 2-1 to a very good Serie A side. And we were not outplayed across either leg. In fact, we were markedly the better side in the first leg. But I think that in simple terms, when we look back on the two legs, they, and Jack in particular, will see it as a missed opportunity because fundamentally we were not outplayed. We were the better team over large patches of both those legs. So there's a lot of positives going forward to feel like if we're in that position again, we can qualify for the group stage of that tournament. Yeah, I, I, interesting what you bring up there, Ben, about the, you know these high-profile games at the beginning of the season. And I wonder how much, um, Christian, that actually helps players. You know, you really focus on what are some big games very early on and, and you know, you're in, in decent cup action early on. Yeah, it's nice, especially, you know, you're in pre-season and um, you're doing those hard runs and, you know, that, that's a real carrot at the end of the line, you know, when you know that you've got massive games to, to look forward to and you push yourself that much that much further. And, you know, um, after obviously a disappointing end of the season, in the end, we were straight away looking forward to the cup competitions and, you know, um, playing in Europe was the first for me and it was something that um, something I really wanted to do. And that was one of the things that, uh, was a goal of mine when I, I signed for Hibs was was to play in Europe. So that to to be able to do that this year was was, was a really good feeling. And obviously the lads are, are gutted about um, losing uh, last week, but you know uh, we'll push to to get another opportunity in Europe next season. Let's hope so. And we know that one person who will be with us next season is the Boiler. He's signed until twenty twenty four, and it's great news for the club. I'm absolutely delighted. Um, the talks have been going on for a while um, and they've been positive and um, my commitment to this club is um, one that I'm, I'm highly strong about. My family love it here um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, love the, I love the place and yeah, um, glad I've committed. Reportedly there was interest elsewhere. Why did you want to sign a, a new deal with us and, and not look elsewhere? I think everything's in place for me here. Um, you know, years ago they gave me the opportunity when I had nothing um, and it's just about giving back and I've said that the last time I signed my contract um, I'm enjoying my football, I'm happy my wife plays for the ladies my daughter came to her first game in 18 months the other day and she was loving it and you know what, and just when things are in place it just makes sense um, so it was a, it was a no-brainer for me Happiness is a massive thing for you, isn't it? Both on and off the pitch Yeah, absolutely, I mean professional football player. It's what I wanted to do when I was a young boy and thankfully I've managed to do that and I come to work every day with a smile on my face and you know I train hard and um, hopefully I can get even better and, and better each season as it goes on but I've you know I'm loving it and like you say if, if I can't come to work every day and not enjoy myself and then I'm in the wrong profession so like I say I'm one of the fortunate guys that can actually say that you know they're doing what they love and like you say I'm in a happy environment and long may it continue. Yeah, and your game is flourishing because of that. Have you? How have you seen yourself develop over the last few years? Yeah, obviously when I first came in, I was a bit raw. I was like a speedboat with no driver. I was just, just fast. Um, but thankfully with the management staff and everyone that's been in place here, I've managed to, to kind of kick on each season. Um, you know, I've got better on different aspects of my game, and I've been working, you know, hard um, to get better, which is which is great. And thankfully each season that I have, you know, I've hit like different heights, um, which is great. And obviously off the back of last season, probably my 
best career season is is great. So I've hit the ground running this year, and long may it continue. How's Jack Ross helped you with your development too? Jack's been great. Um, better not call him Jack. The gaffer's been great. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was he was a massive part of this when I, you know, I've been speaking to him all the time in the office and you know picking up the phone and like you say, he was a massive part of this. Um, the management staff and what he's brought to me and you know the freedom that he gives me on the pitch and um, just the, the trust that we have together. Um, it's great and I can't ask for any more than that and like you say, it's, um, he's one man that you don't want to let down because he's put that much trust in you and hopefully I can continue to keep um, contributing towards uh, the club. Christian, what sort of a, a character, I've, I've asked this to a couple of your colleagues, is, is the boiler in the dressing room? Oh, he's, he's wild, you know, like I've never, well, I, to be fair, I've met a few footballers like him, um, but he's elite in personality. Um, yeah, he's just lively every single day, you know. Um, you've never seen him have a, a down day. Well, I certainly haven't. And, you know, he, he does lift the spirits in the change room. Um, he's always up to little tricks and, you know, he can, he can get on people's nerves. But, you know what, no one would change him for the world. He's, he's a great character. He's a great person to have. In, in your team and especially when he's doing it on the Saturday you know his numbers last year were unreal so yeah. fair play to him for getting this new deal and who's going to claim the credit out of uh, Ben or Adam with a with the tweet that um, with with the, just a picture of the boiler and, and 2024 on it our uh, digital lead uh, Matthew Newton I think he can uh, take the credit for that it was, it was nice wasn't it it looked really really good um, you couldn't really tell it was photoshopped either I thought it was it was very good, and and what has been the sort of response on the on the socials, Adam, since since the boiler signed? Yeah, it's uh, been been really really well received, um, as I think everyone thought it would be. Um, the supporters kind of just rolling in straight away, saying how good it is that that uh, boiler's staying with us, how good it is that he's enjoying his time at the football club, and. And how good it is that we're keeping our best players at, at the football club. I think that this was a big statement on that front. And uh, as a football club, we want to keep progressing and keep developing. And to do that, you have to keep your best players at the football club, like like Christian said, on and off the pitch. Martin is a massive part of, of, of what we want to do here, whether that's being a bundle of energy every day and lifting everyone's spirits, but then... On the pitch as well, I think last season he scored 15 goals in all competitions. This year he scored five and seven. Um, and that, that's how you, you progress and, and move forwards as, as a football club. You, you build on your squad, you, you keep hold of your best players. Um, so, yeah, like, like I said, it's, it's been really, really, really well received. And the psychology for players, Christian, when one of your colleagues says, right, I'm staying, as opposed to, well, actually, you know, I might, I might end up somewhere else. What does that mean uh, to you as, as part of the squad? Well, the last thing as a squad is for uh, Martin Boyle to no longer be a Hibernian player, you know. Um, he's won games on his own uh, last season and, and this year he's, he started so brilliantly. So you just know that those figures that he got last year, he's, he's likely to... To, to go past them and that's massive for us you know we had a a great season last year getting third and you know getting to the final of the Scottish Cup and that's something we want to do every year so we need players like Martin Boyle um, who are red up form to, to keep continuing to, to do that and uh, it would definitely would have been a big miss and I know the lads are delighted that um, he's re-signed and he's, he won't be going anywhere so that's great for us. And all the noises out of the club, Ben, you know more than anyone, you know, is it's a statement of intent, really, isn't it? And and unfortunately, with you know, Christian being out for a bit, whether whether another striker will come along at some stage. Of course, we've got Chris Mueller who will be joining us in January, more of a winger, but can certainly be versatile enough to play across, for example a front three or behind a lead striker. But naturally, Jack's made no secret of the fact that there's still time left in the window. So it wouldn't surprise anybody, especially if we stay in the cup competitions and continue to push hard in the league if he strengthens his squad. I think that prior to the injury to Christian, the priority was to try and bring in a defender. And again, Jack's made no secret of that. I think it's also really important, though, to say that this is a deep squad 
And we've got Carl McGuinness, who is on excellent form so far with four goals. So he's already surpassed his tally from last season. And goals are perhaps the one area that Jack's been trying to develop in Carl's game. And that's definitely helping us. We've got Kevin Nisbet as well, who's in red hot form. But obviously Christian's going to be hugely missed over the next three or four months. But I think as far as Boiler is concerned, it's just about that statement of intent, like you say. So Hibernian Football Club wants to challenge in all competitions and to continue building upon the nucleus from last season. And that's why Jack's been rewarded with an extended contract and keeping hold of Martin is just a continuation of that strategy as well. And under Ron Gordon, I think the philosophy is going to change a bit and also our new CEO, Ben Kensell. And there's no point almost in having success if all you're going to do is alert your best players to other clubs. And then during an off season, they're going to depart because then constantly every season you have to build from scratch. And if you want to succeed in Europe, for example, with those games being so early with qualifiers at the beginning of a season, it's very difficult to carry over that momentum if your core squad is all potentially going to be exiting Easter Road. So what we've done really well over the off season so far is carried on that momentum. And what we've also built is now a team of internationals. So you've got Martin Boyle, who is signed and is an Australia international. You've got Kevin Nisbet, who was out with the Euros with Scotland and came on against England. You've got Alex Gogic, who is a Cypriot international. And you've got Christian on this call. And Chris, I guess it is that quality of squad and that core and that momentum that we're looking to build on. And I refer to you as international because I think it's fair to say, I don't know whether you agree, that had you not picked up this injury, you must have felt like you were right on the cusp of that call-up to Wales. Yeah, um, there was definitely discussions um, this time round that I was potentially going to be called up to the squad, which would have obviously been great. But, you know, it's something to, to keep me motivated whilst I'm, I'm doing my rehab to, to push to, to get close again. Um, Obviously, being in a team full of internationals is great, um, especially when they come back from national duty. Uh, it's just question time. You're asking them how it was, you know, and it's um, it's great. And it's, it's credit to the football club, um, the amount of internationalists we've got now. And to be fair, I feel like there they could be a, more, a few more uh, potentially very soon. So it's it's great. You know, you want to play with these players. It shows that they're the best in their country. So um, it sh- shows that Hibernian Football Club are doing something right. And actually, we've got one piece of late news that has just arrived across my desk. And it says that James Scott, the 20 year old forward from Hull City, has signed for Hibs for the rest of the season on loan. Now, you may recall the um, under 21 Scottish international started his career at Motherwell, then went to Hull and returns to us, returns to Scotland and will be uh, reinforcements for uh, Christian, obviously out injured uh, as a striker for the rest of the season. And we have caught up with him. Well, obviously I played in the Scottish Premier League before and obviously know how big a club Hibs is and how well they've started this season. So obviously it was the number one club for me and I'm glad I've got it over the line. And High Bees fans will know that you're a forward, but elaborate a little bit more. What kind of player are you? Um, I'm really direct. Uh, I like to play anywhere on the front four, really, but... Uh, I like to play through, through the middle, get a lot of goals and not got a lot of goals to my name, but I think coming to this club, I've got a lot of people who can give me a lot of assists and get some goals in. Been a bit of a baptism of fire as far as transfers are concerned because yeah. you came up late yesterday, yeah. medical, yeah. straight into training, immediately in the squad for Dundee. Exactly, it's been a long day, but Gaffer wants me involved, obviously I can't wait um, to be involved with Dundee and Hopefully it goes well and get one. No footballer wants to benefit at the expense of another due to injury, but yep. the fact that Christian <clears throat> Doidge is out until December yep. should allow you to be an integral part of the yep. squad from the word go. No, definitely. Um, obviously, I hope he gets better and hope he comes back uh, a lot fitter. Um, but for me, I just want to crack on, obviously play as many games as I can and hopefully help this team out. The more the merrier. I think the, the, the bigger, the stronger the squad, um, the better and the more chances as this you know long season um, progresses. Adam, what's the what's the latest on the on, on the socials that, that you have got for us of, of note? Yeah, I mean on the main it's all been uh, just positive energy and positive news uh, surrounding Martin Boyle, but the 
other little bits um, have, have crept in that have been fantastic. Um, we had uh, a young supporter um, who, who dyed his hair green. Um, uh, Chantel was put, when your child asks the barber for green hair for the high bees, you know you're raising him well. What do you reckon? <laughs> would, you, uh, would you dye your hair green? I, I, I've never done green. What a Christian. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. on to my hair for my life at the moment. So if I dyed it green, it would all come out, I think. And I'd have a ball. <laughs> so I won't do that just yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe very soon. With a beard. Yeah, well, the beard's growing. The beard grows longer now because the hair on top's getting shorter. <laughs> You're all right at the moment. You've got nothing hey. to worry about. Christian, you, you and, and others who've been on the show um, last week and, and previous weeks are reflecting, you know, that, that feeling inside the dressing room and, and um, um, a, a real sense of not resting on, on what happened last year, you know, that taking it forward into this year that, that Ben was talking about. Yeah, uh, obviously we had a great year last year, but I'm coming back um, this season and, and watching the games and being involved in them, it's almost like something's clicked. Um, obviously the gaffer has his plans on, on how he wants to play and the last few games I was involved in, I really started to see that in, in action and it, it looked like everyone was really on the same page. You know, the way that we were switching the ball quickly, we were getting crosses in the box. It was really exciting. A uh, few games we were just out and out attacking and, you know, they're, they're the teams that you want to be involved in, the teams that are on the front foot and, you know, they're, they're really exciting and I really feel like we're, we're that kind of side this season. Well, me as a fan, you know, what you've just said is everything I want to hear, you know, that, that, that you're gelling as a group, that, that you're right behind the philosophy of what your manager is trying to do and it's working, you know, you, you're understanding and there's almost that intuition now of, right, well, I know he's running there, so I'm going that way, and this ball will, do, you know, X, Y, Z, and, and that's so refreshing to hear. Yeah, and we, well, we've obviously kept the same squad, like not a lot of, well, hardly anyone's left, so we've got the same core group of players, so that's, that's massive. If you, the more you play football with, um, for example, for me, with, with Boyley, with Nizzy, with, with Joe Newell, you know, you're only going to get better. Um, all that practising together on the training pitch, and, you know, and I think that was been there to see, you know, the strikers are getting a lot, a lot and a lot of chances, you know, and the midfielders, Ginto's come in, he's had a, it's Kyle McGuinness, sorry, that's his nickname, um, but he's obviously, come, <laughs> so he's obviously come in and, you know, he had a really tough time with picking up injuries, he got COVID, but really seeing the player that, he, like, what what kind of player he is now, he's, he's, he's getting loads of goals and that's not going to stop. It's, 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 I mean, it's a great place to be. If we could be here having these sort of conversations in, in April and May, I think we'll all have massive smiles on our faces, which, which would be amazing. Ben, have you got anything else to throw in the hat before we, uh, before we head off? Only the fact that you would be remiss if you don't elaborate on your cryptic exclusive that you began the show with. So I, I about Judy meets Rudy. What on earth is that about? Even I'm in the dark on it. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's a little exclusive that does need a little bit of explanation, which I will say, well, we have two huge guests on our show next week. Uh, one was a two-time world football or a footballer of the year. And the other is actually a football coach, but a mother of someone that we um, know as a sporting icon. So Judy Murray will join us next week. Why is she being a football manager, you may ask? Answers next week. And Rude Hullett will be on the show next week. Um, I've had a chat with him and he says he's very happy to come on the High B Buzz and he will be exclusively with us next week. And you'll have to rejoin us to find out exactly what Rude has got to say about Hibs and the club. So there you go. What a little pairing, Rudy and Judy. Better, better than Richard and Judy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what we've got to look forward to next week. Um, Christian, all the best with your rehabilitation. Um, we're all looking forward to seeing you back on the pitch. Uh, do we realistically have to say it's probably going to be next year, the beginning of next year, before we see you? Or can we hope that you'll be there um, before the break? Well, I think we worked it out. It's be the start of December, so... Fingers crossed everything goes uh, goes to plan and hopefully I'll be back out there in December. 
Um, I'm not sure Nathan will like the sound of that uh, part of the medical team because obviously they're going to be want to be very cautious. But obviously I'm going to work very hard to, to try and get back as soon as possible. Um, hopefully it flies by, but hopefully the lads keep winning and uh, it's, we're in a good place when I come back. Good stuff. Uh, well, all the best to you. I hope it goes well. Thank really you. appreciate you joining us. Been great to have you on board. Uh, ben, I suppose one last question to you. How did your sing song go uh, out in Rijeka? Did, did you get away with it? Well, here's the thing, OK. I had something lined up and I practised it. And I, <laughs> we will, we will re-echo you. We yes. will, we will re-echo you. And I was going to sing the first verse and I was going to change the lyric from Buddy, you're a boy to Buddy, you're a boil. And I was going to get Martin Boyle to stand next to me. Buddy, you're a boil, make a big noise playing in the street. Gonna be a big man someday, you got mud on your face. <laughs> and I was gonna do all of that, and I was gonna get the lads to do a little clap. And then, I kid you not, I was editing the Heidi Buzz, and the players had already eaten by the time I got down, so I got away with it. And I oh, I can't believe that. You won't that. get away with that for long. <laughs> Christian, <laughs> hold, hold him to it and make yeah. sure it happens one day. And one other thing to add that Christian will know about, but I cannot reveal the exact details on air because it is rated 18, is because I didn't sing, we've got a players media group. And when it was discovered I didn't sing, there was an alternative offered to me in a <laughs> group. And Christian and Adam will know exactly what that alternative is, but it is not on air, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, that won't be able to come on, yeah. No, well, thank goodness for that, because I don't think I want to see it either. So uh, anyway, guys, thank you all very much indeed. It's been great to have your company. This has been the High B Buzz, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>